Corex 6 here back for another third party Transformers review. And if you're looking at this, you're going, wait, T2RX6, that's Rhinox, that's not a third party toy. You're right. And it's no big surprise that I'm not a huge Beast Formers fan. I grew up in a time outside of Beast Wars, um, pre Beast Wars. So when this came out, I was pretty much done with toys, and you know, Rhinox doesn't hold too much of a big place in my heart. I have some beasts, so I picked this guy up, but, you know, he's kind of a disappointment. Does he not look like the, uh, Rhino? Like, exactly like the Rhino from Ace Ventura, where he, uh, uh, comes out his butt? That mechanical, super stiff, and that's kind of what I feel with this toy, and, uh, that's kind of a review for another day. Let's get rid of him. We don't want to talk about him too much. We want to talk about some real beasts. So today we're taking a look at the, uh... Mastermind Creations R03 Bovis, otherwise known as Tantrum from uh, Predaking here. And yeah, this is the type of beast I care about. Dinosaurs, Predacons, yeah, that's where my uh, nostalgia lies. So uh, yeah, we got the uh, bull mode here, and you can see I've got a couple Reaper labels. I do have the Minimus set, I believe they called it. Um, unfortunately, not all the stickers are applied because some of them actually ripped as I was trying to peel them off uh, due to not being cut properly so they're sending me a replacement set but whatever we got the important one we got his little bull nose ring um, pretty nice the only thing I wish is he had some kind of little flip out tail or something but probably be real easy to break um, posability on this guy yeah he got some range of motion in the legs um, ball joint on the lower portion here so you do have a little bit of motion here, not a whole ton. Um, the head can turn because of the transformation, but uh, it, it's not bad. Um, I do wish the legs were maybe a little bit beefier or brought into the sides a bit more. I can't really tell. Um, they do look a bit strange. I think the Unique Toys one might do the legs a little bit better in my opinion, but it's Unique Toys. I won't be getting it. I would rather have these slightly strange legs versus anything unique toys to be completely honest but that said they're better than the G1 which don't move at all and just end up looking rather strange but you can see that they've pretty well nailed the G1 colors um, reds are a touch different but uh, I don't think that it's anything that you can kind of take points away from G1 was a foot we could attach his little foot on top and make a big foot blaster here is our big foot here, which actually contains the hand too. Totally capable of uh, flipping out this little black piece down here and just kind of plugging it right on top. You can see that it is molded such that it's going to follow the contour of his legs here. And it is a bit tough to get it into the top there, but when it does, it's a good peg in sound. And that's really solid. And unlike the Unique Toys version, there's no lights in here, but hey, there's no way to change the batteries on the Unique Toys version. Another really bad idea. Inside the box, you also get these two knives and these two guns. And not wanting to be left out of the equation, we can peg these onto the sides of uh, Tantrum here. And we'll put the knives on the front because if he's going to bull charge someone, I feel you want some knives sticking out the side of your legs here, right? So we'll peg those on like so on each side. And in the process, knock off the other things that we were doing here. And yeah, you've got a really well-armed bull. I mean, he is ready to uh, just destroy anyone who gets in his way. So before we put this guy into his uh, robot mode, we should do the combiner part because it's easier to do the combiner piece when he is in his uh, bull mode. So we're going to start with this. We're going to take the hand out. You just kind of move that around and you should be able to unpeg it and just pull it out. And here you go. You got the hand and all things said, he's looking about the same size as a Hercules Celeste Superion hand. Um, the fingers seem a little more short and stubby but mostly that's because of the big hand guard on top. So it is kind of surprising that he's going to be 
um, about the Superion slash Hercules size, just considering how much bigger these bots are than the Superion Hercules bots. But heck, what can you do? So, we'll put this out. And then you got that kind of the hook going and this is on a really nice ball joint so when he's on there we're going to get a great range of motion over uh, what you do for Superion and such. So we're going to come to the uh, bot here, we're going to flip his head around and we're going to flip it down and you can see you got this little piece here that it just kind of pushes on into like so. And then we're going to pretty much start transforming this guy to his uh, robot mode. And these are a little bit tricky, so we want to flip the uh, legs down like this, and you've got a tab up here and a tab down here in respective slots, and they're really kind of difficult to get in. What you have to do is kind of forcefully push them up, and you should get it to uh, slide and peg in just as that little piece goes in. Once you have it like that, we can get these legs set up so we can put it back uh, connected. And again, you've got uh, a little cutout here and a little peg here, and that should clip in. And the foot, the whole of the foot, should actually go onto that little peg there. So you just kind of put it together, rotate it on up, and everything should kind of hold together. Um, you might get a little bit of a click out of it, like I just got. Uh, we certainly don't want this up like this, so you can see his face. I'm gonna show that later, but uh, we'll keep that like so uh, then we're gonna come and split his legs apart here and this part's a little bit difficult to show off but you got this channel here um, that comes down and it basically is this exact shape you have to make sure your leg panel is held closed because if it's not um, you're not gonna get it to connect properly there's a little slot here which is gonna correspond with this so it's hard to show this one on camera um, because it's hard enough for me to see it but once you have it in position everything should kind of come in and peg together down there and uh, I suspect you guys will be able to figure that out I don't think that we need to show much more than that and as you can see still got a pretty solid range of motion out of him um, I think he's gonna turn out pretty awesome so now we're gonna come to the arms here and we're gonna unpeg these like this and kind of bring these all the way down and peg them in to the red foot pieces down at the bottom here and once we brought this all down you should actually be able to peg this like that it doesn't really say to do that in the instructions but it's so close together I don't see why you wouldn't and then we're gonna take these feet here rotate them the other way like so and then we'll rotate these legs around so the uh, bottom of the hoof goes towards the back here and we'll just kind of plug it on in and there is our foot assembly it looks like we got the big combiner port here to rotate out and up and this guy is ready to become a leg for something um, looks like it's going to be a bit more solid than the Hercules combiner um, it seems to follow more of that technology that uh, um, Giant and stuff had, which makes sense. But yeah, there you go. He's in his foot. So I'm going to cut here. I'll put him back to his bull mode, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're here. We have him in his bull mode. Let's get him to his robot mode, shall we? So we're going to start again doing that really difficult leg transformation here. Um, actually no we're not we're gonna just kind of keep this out of the way for now because these feet are interesting and sort of a pain at the same time so let's actually get to doing them we're gonna open these panels on up and flip everything around flipping up those knee guards while we can and we'll flip this, uh, these little pieces forward just for now and we're gonna come to these here and now this is the I guess kind of the hardest part of this whole thing is to figure out how this works so it all kind of tabs in and you have to kind of take it and figure out how you can move it in such a way that you can get it to uh, kind of swing around like this because you don't have that full range of motion there and then you'll flip it all the way on through 
and you can see how we've just kind of switched the orientation of the leg um, without it you're kind of stuck like this so we'll take it swing it all the way through and then we'll close this on up and arrange his foot so it's looking normal and you can kind of do what you want with these bottom panels uh, for his feet there um, if you want them sticking out kind of like little foot covers you can do that I personally just like them when they're back I like having more foot showing versus less and yeah so we got two feet basically we'll go ahead and finish these you gotta take this and do that difficult transformation where uh, the tabs will compress like so. And do it again on this side. There we go. And now we'll just kind of get his feet situated properly. Like that. I know how I just turned that around. And then lock these all in place down here and there we go we got some feet like so like I said do what you want with these little red panels at the bottom here so now we're gonna come up to the top here and we're gonna flip this around um, I can't get these black pieces to go around the uh, chest piece here so I just kind of swivel them around with it but that's fine it's really not all that big of a deal so put that like so and we'll come around here to the arms and we'll disconnect the bull foot like that and we'll disconnect the arms here like so now take these panels and rotate them forward like so on both sides and doing so is going to reveal from the back here um, the part where you're going to tab it into the foot and where the hoof is going to connect so you can kind of swing this on up and connect it like that on each side we'll do it again for this side rotate the hoof here and plug it all in so it's solid we got all that we'll flip out his little hands here and then we'll rotate the bison or the uh, bullhead and you can kind of do what you want with the uh, horns I kind of like to have them sort of like this because I feel that that is the best G1 and then just kind of carefully do it this part's a little bit of a pain it's sometimes easier to uh, come from behind here you can kind of push it a little while you open it and that'll give you enough room to uh, grab his mouth. Alright, sorry about the quick jump cut there. My uh, head got a little bit stuck because when I had pushed his face up I kind of pushed it too far. Um, but basically you can open his jaw here and it'll help get his face down. You can see where mine has taken a little bit of a beating from going too far up. Fortunately, it doesn't really affect anything and it should be relatively easy to get it down So just make sure when you flip this up, you don't push it too much further than it needs to go um, To make sure you can get it down But there you go. Now we've got Bovis in his uh, Robot mode and I gotta say this guy is pretty beefy and looking pretty good um, Range of motion you don't get much side to side kind of like the fans project toys um, just because of the kibble, but you do get the full 360. You do have the upper arm swivel, a double jointed elbow, but due to kibble only goes about that far. Um, the wrist is on a swivel. You do have the hips, of course, the head here, and actually, 
if you pull it up there is a little bit of a uh, joint here that I'm not entirely sure what it's for um, maybe it's for when he's in bull mode and I just never noticed it until just now but it kind of does give you a little bit of up and down on the head so if you wanted to kind of pose it with him looking a little angry you can kind of cheat it a little bit um, I don't recall ever seeing that joint ever um, legs you've got the kind of that universal uh, joint there where it goes in and out and forward and back giving you plenty of motion um, the just above the knee swivel pretty solid knee but you're only getting that much movement out of it just because of the uh, uh, again the extra kibble pieces oops I forgot these pieces swivel out to the sides there we go once we do that and uh, kind of peg them in you get more range of motion I was wondering why it didn't seem like it was quite right but yeah and then your foot here is on the uh, ball joint with a uh, separate little toe piece so you can kind of get some little poses there if you so please um, in terms of his weapons it's a little bit difficult to get these in because you have to kind of force them in sideways and turn them in place I'm not a huge fan of how those are um, but it does make a pretty cool end result you can take all these weapons of course and he does have various points around his body that you can peg them if you just want them to uh, kind of be storing them um, I find these little flaps get in the way a little so I kind of put them back if I'm gonna hang the knives on here if I'm not gonna hang the knives they're not quite as big of a deal if they're in the way but yeah the knives I find don't particularly well uh, clip into here I mean they peg in just fine but they do have this tendency to fall out I think just because of their size but there you go you can peg the knives um, they hold a little more securely into the bottom pegs but I don't know they just don't look as nice there and then we've got his guns and we can give him that too and it's interesting considering how you have to get everything in um, if you just kind of peg these in they're gonna be real loose you have to get it very precisely in that hole and then they're really really solidly held in there and there you go it looks pretty good with that if you don't like having extra pieces you can of course take this piece here and these little back pieces here will actually just line up so you can peg it on in and he does become a bit more back heavy once we put these on but nothing that his own heel spurs and stuff can't take care of as he holds that all nicely um, yeah looks really solid there he is next to your G1 version so you can see about the same overall height between these guys but obviously a lot more bulk. Here is uh, Rhinox, who I'm not a big fan of. See, look what you did, Rhinox. You're taking down the whole entire set. Fix that. And fix Rhinox. I don't know, you guys want to see a review on Rhinox? Leave it in the comments if you do or not. Um, again, I'm not a huge... Beast Wars fan so it may jade my opinion on this guy a little but uh, this guy's got more issues than my not being a big Beast Wars fan personally uh, I don't know leave a comment if you want to see it if not whatever he can go back to his bin of obscurity but yeah there we go stupid Rhinox knocking over absolutely everything there we go. Put him there and let's try one more time to get Rhinox to stand. So you can see that uh, Bovis slash Tantrum is a very generous sized Voyager. Uh, for other comparisons here, I've still got this guy kicking around. So you can see Orion's is a little bit bigger than him. But uh, yeah, he's pretty darn big. So. Yeah, I really like this guy. I think he turned out really well. I can't wait to get the others in the set and uh, put them all together. And uh, really, he's just so big and beefy that I may end up displaying this guy on a uh, shelf 
without him being in his uh, Predator King mode, at least at all times. So, this is T2RX6, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next week.